What did the Lord Jesus intend for us when he invited us to pray, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? Our call as co-workers is that through prayer and through the exercise of the authority vested in us, we further God's kingdom and establish his will here on earth. This morning, I just want to bring our attention to one particular aspect of the prayer the Lord Jesus taught his disciples and therefore taught us to pray or the pattern uh, uh, that he gave us in prayer. And then I want to just uh, extend that to its application to our lives today. And then we'll go into a time of just ministering for healings, miracles, and the supernatural. So if you turn with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter, and we're going to read verses 9 and 10. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Jesus, as he was teaching his disciples, and of course there was the audience around there, listening to him, giving his sermon on the mount, he began to speak about prayer, and then he, he gave a pattern for prayer. We're just picking up two verses from that, Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. He said, in this manner, therefore pray. So this is a pattern for prayer of, you know, or what we would commonly refer to as, you know, focus areas or points that you and I need to pray about. So it says, in this manner, you pray like this. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to focus in on verse 10. One of the points that Jesus wanted us to focus in on prayer. The part of verse 9, of course, has to do with worship and adoration and reverence towards the Father. He says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I worship you. I adore you. And that's an expression of our reverence, our worship, uh, our uh, adoration of God. But after you do that, what's the next thing? He says in verse 10. He says, You pray like this. You pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, of course you and I understand that these are not lines that we just repeat or recite meaninglessly. That is not the intent of the Lord Jesus uh, giving us this outline or this pattern for prayer. But what he's telling us is this, that when we pray, we are praying for God's kingdom to be ushered in on earth. And we also have to pray for his will to be established here on earth the same way it is already established in heaven. And so I want to focus on that, and the title of this message is just a simple message, a reminder for us, on earth as in heaven. Let's focus in on the part of the verse, the first part of the verse, where Jesus is talking about the kingdom. He says when we believers, when we are engaged in prayer, our desire, our prayer is, Lord, we want your kingdom to come. What does it mean, your kingdom to come? And obviously, in, in the context of that verse, it means we want your kingdom to come on earth, in our realm, in our lives. We want your kingdom to come. And that's the direction. That's how we are supposed to be praying. That's what we are supposed to be desiring from God. And using what God has given to us to see that happen. Now, when we look at the, uh, about prayer, remember prayer is us co-working with God. So prayer is not something where we just say, God, you know, I'm giving you something and then you just do, do, do something with what I'm saying. No, prayer is our co-working with God. And uh, uh, whatever we pray, we should also pursue 
in other ways here on earth. So we don't just, we don't just pray something and go, do something opposite to what we have prayed. We pray, but the rest of our life and the rest of our, rest of our effort should be aligned to our prayer in order to see what we've prayed for also fulfilled. So I am presenting, I want us to look at prayer as our co-working with God, not just something I say to God and then forget about it, no, but our prayer is really our co-working with God and it is part of a bigger engagement with God where you and I are engaged with God in this process of seeing all of these things take place in our lives and through our lives. And so he says, this is how you should pray. This is what, how you should be co-working with the Father. Uh, uh, you, you and I should be praying, thy kingdom come. We want your kingdom to be ushered in here on earth. The kingdom of God really represents the rule, the dominion, and the government of God extended here on earth. So when he says, pray your kingdom come, he's saying, God, we want your rule, your dominion, the expression of who you are to be released here on earth. Your kingdom, your rule, and your dominion come here on earth. Now, in Scripture, we understand the kingdom of God, at least for us as New Testament believers, we understand the kingdom of God in two aspects. One, there is what we would refer to as the millennial kingdom, which we read about in Revelation, the 20th chapter, when the Lord Jesus comes and he he establishes his physical, literal kingdom. He rules from Jerusalem, and the saints reign with him from Jerusalem over the earth for a period of a thousand years. Revelation, the 20th chapter, the first six verses. So, That is what we refer to as a millennial kingdom. But there is another aspect of the kingdom which you and I are engaged in already. It is the kingdom of God which John the Baptist introduced as he announced the coming of Jesus. John the Baptist, his message was, repent for the kingdom of heaven is here, is at hand. The kingdom of heaven has come into our realm. The rule and the dominion of God is invading our realm. And that was the message of John the Baptist as he prepared the way for Jesus the Messiah. And when the Lord Jesus came, he began to announce the same thing. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand or it's near. It's accessible. It has come into our realm. And one of the things that we see in the teachings of Jesus is this. He teaches us how we can enter into the kingdom and how we can have the kingdom invade our worlds. Means we enter in and we become part of the kingdom of God when we are born again because Jesus said unless a man is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So as people who have been born again, who have received life from God, Um, received God's life in us. We have entered into the kingdom of God. Uh, We we have been translated from the powers of darkness and been translated into the kingdom of God's dear Son. But at the same time, he says, now we who are part of the kingdom, we, as the Bible calls us, the children of the sons of the kingdom, we now are engaged with the king to cause his kingdom to come into our realm. And so Jesus demonstrated to us what it means for God's kingdom to come into our realm. So as you follow the ministry of Jesus, you find that Jesus went about everywhere preaching the good news of the kingdom. See, he was announcing everywhere, I've got good news. God's kingdom is coming into our realm. The kingdom of God is invading our realm. And it's God is establishing His rule, His reign, His dominion in our hearts, in our lives. And from within us, He's beginning to touch every part of our life here on earth. God is beginning to rule and reign and extend His dominion, His influence in us and through us, touching every aspect of our life. So he said the kingdom of God is here and he proclaimed the good news of the kingdom. But everywhere Jesus went preaching 
the gospel of the kingdom and teaching about the kingdom, he also demonstrated what happens when the kingdom of God invades our realm. The Bible records through the gospels that as Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom, people were healed, demons were cast out, Demon, demonic works were destroyed. Miracles began to take place because that is the coming of the kingdom. In fact, in Matthew, the 12th chapter, the 28th verse, Jesus said, if I, by the Spirit of God, cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come to you. So he's saying, look, this casting out of demons, this experience, Spelling of demonic works, this destroying of demonic works, this healing of the sick and, and, the, and the miracles that meet the needs of people. He says that is an expression of God's kingdom invading our world. That God's kingdom comes in and overthrows what the kingdom of darkness has been doing to people. And that is what Jesus is saying here. He says, I, I want you to pray, thy kingdom come. God, I want your rule, your reign to come. And you know, the early church continued doing the same thing. Because as you read through the book of Acts, you find that they went about preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They were also announcing that God's rule, God's reign is coming into our realm, wants to begin with your heart and then invade your life and through your life invade everything else around you. So the kingdom of God is here. God's rule and dominion is being extended through us. And so now Jesus is teaching us, this is what you pray. You pray, thy kingdom come. We want your rule, your reign, the expression of who you are to be extended in me and to be extended through me. And when your kingdom comes, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 says, for the kingdom of God is not just in word, but in power. So when the kingdom of God comes, there is the expression of the power of God, of the almightiness of God through healing, through deliverance, through overthrowing every evil work of the enemy. And that's what you and I are praying. God, your kingdom come. I want your kingdom to come. So if you and I are praying, Lord, I want your rule and your dominion in my life, in, in, you're praying that this prayer for yourself personally, or you're praying this for your family, or you're praying this for uh, the city in which you live, or you're praying for the nation in which you live. God, I want to see your kingdom come. What we are praying is, God, we want your rule, your dominion, your power to be released through us, and we want it to be expressed like this in demonstrations of the power of God and the casting out of demons, the healing of the sick, and the working of miracles. Because when the kingdom of God comes, it comes with power. And so, as we pray, thy kingdom come. This is what we are asking. You see, and Paul said this in Romans 14, verse 17, he said, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So really, the, the Holy Spirit is the agent who is ushering in the, the kingdom of God, the realm of God's dominion. The Holy Spirit is ushering that in through us, in us and through us. And when the, when the kingdom of God is extended, there is righteousness, there is peace, and there is joy that is brought into our realm because the kingdom of God is invading our lives and through us uh, into the, the realm around us. So when we pray, God, thy kingdom come, we're saying, God, I want your rule, your dominion to come with power to dispel the works of darkness, to destroy what darkness is doing. I want your righteousness, your peace, and your joy to come into my life and through me uh, and into things around me. That's what we are praying. Thy kingdom come. And we are co-workers with God. You see, when Jesus spoke about the church that he was establishing in Matthew 16, verses 16 through 18, he said, I will build my church. And he said, I give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So he's given the church the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Or in other words, he's saying, look, I'm, I will build my church. 
And the church that I build will be so powerful, the gates of hell will not be able to restrain it. The forces of darkness will not be able to stop it. Because to the church, I'm giving them the keys of the kingdom. I'm giving them the authority of God's kingdom. And they on earth, they on earth will bring what's in heaven. They will release it on earth. They will bind and lose on earth so that what God allows and disallows will, will be enforced here on earth. And that is the authority that's given to you and me as the church. So the church is actively engaged in bringing the, uh, bringing the kingdom of God, heaven's realm, into our realm. And the church has been wasted with that kind of authority. And so when you and I are praying, thy kingdom come, it's not a passive prayer saying, oh God, please come and rule in this mess. No, because understand the full picture. Understand that we are, as the church, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. Understand that we as a church have been authorized by heaven. We've been given the keys of the kingdom of heaven to enforce on earth, to cause in a very, very forceful way to actually administer the kingdom here on earth. So this prayer, thy kingdom come, is not a passive prayer. It's not a passive engagement with God and saying, oh God, please come, do something, put your kingdom here. That's not the way we are supposed to pray because we need to understand the full picture of what, what, what the Bible, the New Testament is teaching us. The church has been called into this place to co-work with the Father and to see his kingdom brought in to our realm in a very forceful way through prayer and through the exercise of the authority, through the exercise of the keys of the kingdom that has been put in our hands so that we bind and we lose on earth with the authority God has given to us so that God's kingdom, God's rule, God's dominion is enforced in our lives and in the lives of people. So wherever you find the devil operating, you're saying, I'm going to bring the kingdom to God in. Wherever you find the enemy operating, holding people in bondage, where there is darkness, where there is evil, you're saying, I'm bringing the kingdom of God in. Because that's what the church has been called to do through prayer and through the exercise of the authority given to us. So the second part of the verse follows along with the same way. It says here, he says, when you pray, pray like this, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, if you ask the average Christian, you know, or, or, or let's put it like this. Uh, the average Christian, when they pray this part of the prayer, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Usually, it's a very passive thing. It's a non-involvement prayer. What do I mean by that? They just say, Lord, thy will be done. In other words, Lord, just do what you want. Don't, don't ask me to, you know, be involved in this. Your will be done. I'm taking my hands off. But that's really not, that's exactly the opposite of what Jesus intended in this prayer. Because when he says, we pray, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Remember, we are co-workers with God. We can never pray a prayer like, God, I'm, you know, I have nothing to do with this. That will be done. That's not it. What we are saying is, God, I am stepping in and I'm going to co-work with you to see your will be done on earth even as it is in heaven. Meaning what's in heaven, I want to see it established here on earth. So it's a, actually a prayer of full involvement where we are saying, God, we want to see your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, uh, many times we misunderstand this prayer. You know, we pray, typically we pray this prayer. Of course, there is an application in the area of surrender. When we surrender our will to the will of the Father, and we say, God, not my will, but your will be done. And that, that's one aspect of it. But that is only one of the many applications of this prayer. This prayer really is saying, God, I want your will, what you want done, I want that to be established here on earth. So the real issue is, what is the will of the Father? Because that's what we must be going after, to see that established here on earth. The, the will of God, the word of God is the will of God. So the Psalm 119 verse 89 says, Forever, O Lord, your word is established in heaven. Your word is established. So the word of God is an expression of the will of God. And if we know the word of God, then we know the will of God. 
Now, the word of God is demonstrated or expressed for us through the person of Jesus Christ because he is the eternal word who became flesh. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 and 6, when, when, when Jesus came into this world, it is said about him, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. So if we want to know the will of God, look at the person of Jesus Christ. Because he is a will of God in, ex in action. He is a will of God in demonstration. And there can be no doubt about what the will of God is when we look at the person of Jesus Christ. So what do we see about G Jesus in the four Gospels? In the four Gospels, we see Jesus going about healing the sick. We see Jesus delivering people. We see Jesus working miracles. And not once did he turn any person away who came to him in faith. Every person who came to Jesus in faith, he ministered to. He, they received their healing. He never told any person, you know, maybe it's not the Father's will to heal you today. Never. You don't find any of that record. The one man who came to Jesus questioning the, the will of the Lord, that was a leper in Matthew 8. He came to Jesus saying, Lord, if it be your will, you can, I know you can make me clean. Immediate, Jesus' immediate response was, I will be clean. So he clarified that. Jesus is the will of God in action. He's the will of God in demonstration. And our prayer is, God, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means, God, in any situation, I am praying, I am pursuing, I'm co-working with you to see your will established in that situation. When a sick person, when there's a, when there's a person who's not saved, what is the will of God? It's the will of God for that person to be saved. We know that scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. This is the will of God who will have, uh, uh, this is good and accepted in the sight of God. He says he, he will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is the will of God. We never say, you know, let me find out if God wants to save that person or not. No, if he's unsaved, it's the will of God for him to be saved. For a sick person, what is the will of God? It's the will of God for that person to be healed. If there's a person going through a, 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 a situation where there's a need, it's the will of God for that person's need to be met and that person to be healed or person to be delivered. You see Jesus, what did he do? He is the will of God expressed for us. And so when we pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we are saying, God, whatever you've said in your word, because your word is your will, I want it to be established here on earth. Whatever you've said in your word, I want to see it established here on earth. Whatever I see in the person of Jesus as expressed in the Gospels, I want to see the same things happen today as we pray and minister. So, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what we are engaged with God in, in making happen here on earth. And today... The Supernatural Sunday. That's what we want to pray towards. We want to pray and say, God, your kingdom come in my life or in the lives of those who are listening. God, your will be established in their lives. For the sick, God's will is for you to be healed. If you're not saved, God's will for you is to be saved and to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord, as your Savior. If there's a need in your life, God's will is for your need to be met because my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory through Jesus Christ. So God's kingdom coming is a kingdom of righteousness, peace, and joy. It's the kingdom of God coming in with power. It's the kingdom of God destroying what the devil has done. And we as believers together are co-working with God and with each other to see his kingdom come and his will be established in our lives. That's what we are called to. That's what we pursue in prayer. And that's what we pursue in the, while we exercise our authority and minister to people. We want to see his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as in heaven. What is in heaven to be released into the lives of people? The expression of the very uh, nature of God, the very work of God to be released in the lives of people. God is healer. God is provider. God is deliverer. God is protector. We want to see that released in the lives of people. So what we're going to do today 
after we take a few moments to worship, we're going to come back, and I just want to pray with us today. Whatever your need is, maybe there are some listening, and you need to be saved. You don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Then today, we want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus into your life so that you could be saved, that you can have your sins forgiven, and you can know Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. And He will set, set you free, make you a brand new person, bring you into the kingdom of God, make you a child of God. That's why Jesus came, for His kingdom to come into you, and you to be brought in to His kingdom. If there are people who need healing, as we pray today, we want you to expect healing to come your way, to come into your life. Because God's kingdom comes with power. It brings the healing power of God. His will is for you to be healed because He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, our healer. If there are people in need, various needs in your life, we're going to pray. I, I know that there will be numerous needs. But as we pray, I want you to extend your faith and say, Lord, I receive your kingdom in my life. I receive your will to be done in my life, which is my needs to be met and for me to be fully supplied for so that I can be blessed and I can be a blessing to other people. We're going to expect God to do that as we pray. And then we, we will know that uh, God is doing that work in our lives as we hear your testimonies, as we hear people respond and say, this is what is happening. We will know that God is faithful to his word to establish his word for you and me. Right after this time of worship, we'll be back and we're going to pray together. God, you are a miracle worker. You are a healer. We pray for you to just touch us right now. Minister to us, God. I am the God that he loves. Sent 
worship team for leading us in that time of worship. I want to invite all of us just to join our hearts in prayer and say, Lord, I want your kingdom to come. I want your will to be done in my life as it is in heaven. Now remember, this is not a passive thing. Then they say, I want your kingdom come. That means I want everything of Satan's kingdom to be thrown out, to be destroyed. When I say God's will to be done, I mean that an expression of who God is to be demonstrated, to be released in my life. His healing, His provision, His deliverance, I want that to come in. See, I'm going to pray from this side, but I want you to believe God. I want you by faith to say, God, I receive your kingdom. I receive your will to be established in my life. First, I'm going to lead us in a prayer of salvation. That means for any person who's listening, and you have not been born again, and you've not been brought into the kingdom of God, I want you to ask Jesus to forgive you your sins and to bring you into his kingdom, right? So Jesus Christ paid for your sins on the cross. He was buried. He rose up again. He's alive today. And the Bible says that we will believe in him. Our sins will be forgiven and we will be born again. We'll be brought into his kingdom. So I'm going to lead us in a simple prayer. And if there's anyone who's never done that before, and you, know, you happen to be listening, I want you to join with me in that prayer. If there's a stirring in your heart saying, yes, I need to pray this prayer, then I want you to join with me and say, Jesus, bring me into your kingdom. After that, I'm going to pray for people to be healed, to be delivered. And I want you to expect God to heal you. You see, I may be standing here on the other side of the camera praying, but God knows exactly where you are, and the Holy Spirit is right there with you where you are. And He is so powerful. He can heal any sickness, any disease. So even as I pray in a very simple way, the Holy Spirit will touch you to work the healing that you need in your body and bring you the miracle that you need. Let us pray together. If you need, if you've never been born again, you've never received Jesus into your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Would you say this with me, please? Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I believe that you died for my sins on the cross. I ask you to forgive me my sins. I ask you to come into my life. Make me a new person. Make me a child of God. And bring me into your kingdom. And establish your kingdom in my life. Let your rule, your dominion be established in every part of me. I thank you for doing this. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer for the very first time in your life, and if you don't mind, you could type your name in the live chat right where you are so that we could all see it and celebrate with you. Go ahead and do that if you don't mind. Or if you want to keep it private and some of you still not, you, know, you don't, don't have the courage to do that, it's okay. Send us an email at testimony at apcw.org. Tell us you did that today. We will celebrate with you. So either way, share. Tell us that today was your day you prayed. And ask Jesus to come into your life and bring you into his kingdom. We want to celebrate with you. We're going to pray for people to be healed, to be delivered, and for miracles to take place. It's a very simple thing because he is the king of the kingdom. And he's given us the keys of the kingdom to enforce that in the lives of people. So as I pray and as I speak from this side, the Holy Spirit will touch your life. And as a miracle begins to take place for you, right where you are, uh, as, a mir as you experience a miracle right now, then I want you to take a step and write in the live chat what Jesus has done for you right where you are. 
or send an email to testimony at apcw.org and tell us the miracle that the Lord has done for you. Uh, it could be anything that you need. It could be a healing in your body. It could be an oppression, demonic oppression over your life. But as we pray right now, I want you to expect it. Let's do that. Father, I just pray right now for every person who's listening, who's watching, who's tuned in in some way. And in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus, I speak into their lives. I take authority where every sickness, every disease, every spirit of infirmity. I command spirits of infirmity, of arthritis, of diabetic conditions to come out of people's bodies. I command chronic illnesses to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I command tumors and growths and goiters and, uh, to leave in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, in the name of Jesus, let skin conditions disappear right now. The rashes and the, and the blisters on the skin, let it leave right now. Let there be clean skin coming on their bodies right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke every infirmity in the eyes, infirmities in the ears that are causing problems there. I command those things to leave so that there will be healing. There will be proper sight of sight and proper hearing right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray for little children who have been born with stammering, who have been born with uh, uh, inability to speak properly right now in the name of Jesus. Little children, let them be healed. Let them be able to speak properly. Let them be able to express properly right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be a healing miracle taking place for those children to be able to speak properly in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise, O Lord. We give you thanks and praise for your healing. Put your hand on the part of your body you want Jesus to heal right now and say, Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in my life right now. Put your hand on that part of your body. You want Jesus to heal. And just say, Lord, I receive the power of your kingdom to heal my body, to heal my body. If you've had respiratory illnesses, lay your hand right there on your chest and say, Lord, I receive healing into my lungs right now. Heal me. Deliver me. Lord, we thank you. We bless you for your healing. We bless you for your healing. Let digestive disorders be healed in the name of Jesus by the power of God. Let the miracles take place even there. Let the, let the power of God bring healing even to your digestive system. Let there be healing taking place right now. Ulcers being healed. Chronic conditions that are disturbing your digestive system, be healed, be removed, and you will see the healing in your body. You know that God has healed you. God has restored uh, that part of your function. God has done it for you in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray for people, God, with uh, financial needs and other, other kinds of miracles that they need. Father, even today, we speak divine provision into the lives of people. We speak, Lord God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, cause miracles to take place in their lives. Bring about divine provision in their lives, supernatural provision. God caused an unusual change in their circumstances so that there will be supernatural provision coming into their lives. For those who are looking for jobs, we pray a release miraculously of jobs coming in for them in the name of Jesus, from unexpected sources that they will receive calls, they will receive emails saying, there's a job for you. Let there be unexpected sources bringing jobs into their lives. God, that you provide for them. And we give you thanks. We give you praise, Lord God. We praise you. We honor you. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your miracles. Thank you for your healings. Thank you for your deliverances, Father. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to check your body. If it's possible to tell that a miracle has taken place right now as we were praying, then I want you to take the time to write on the live chat. Of course, some things you need to go to the doctor. You need to do some tests. You need to get uh, checked up. You need to get it verified medically. Do that and then share your testimony. Absolutely fine. 
But if something has happened right now that you can verify, you know for sure, there is no ambiguity, no doubt that a miracle has taken place, then, then please write it in the live chat so we can celebrate with you. If you need to go get tested, go do that at any convenient time. And later on, send that email to us at testimony at apcw.org so that we can celebrate with you. We believe that we are here to usher in his kingdom and to see his will be done on earth as in heaven. Thank you so much for being with us on the service today. I want to encourage you to continue strong in your faith and continue to let God use you to extend his kingdom here on earth and to see his will be done through you, in you and through you, on earth as in heaven. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen.